When people sign up to a premium membership on the Fanpeak platform, we give them $20 worth of Bitcoin. But most people send us their MetaMask wallet address or some other wallet address. I then have to explain that you cannot send Bitcoin to an Ethereum wallet. I know this can be confusing. This is because of something called token standards that separate one cryptocurrency from another. In this video, I will explain what token standards are and how they work. I'm Somi Aryan. I'm a tech philosopher and the founder of the Fanpeak platform, where visionary individuals come to stay in the know and ahead of the curve in business and technology. I'm super passionate about getting more people on board with Web3, investing, and financial empowerment. Please just remember, nothing I say here is financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor. So if you are on board, let's dive right in. I think using the term wallet to describe where we transfer crypto to and from is a little confusing. Because in real life, you can put any kind of currency into a wallet. But in digital assets, it doesn't work quite like that. The reason is that each token is written with a specific code, which is supported by that blockchain. We call this a token standard. In fact, I think it would make more sense to think of it like a lady's purse, which has a lot of compartments. Makeup, phone, car keys, and your water bottle each have their own specific wallets inside the purse, and they can't be interchanged. You get the idea. So in that sense, token standards are like the compartments inside a purse, and digital assets are like the items that fit each compartment. You may be wondering why we don't use the same token standards to make it easy for the consumers. Well, they don't do it for the same reason that Apple and Microsoft don't use the same operating system. Each of these blockchains want to have a competitive edge and take a market share. So they're not really thinking about user convenience first. All right, let's take a look at some of the most common token standards that you're probably gonna be coming across quite a lot. All of these examples are from Ethereum. The first one is ERC20, which is used for the majority of the fungible tokens that are built on the Ethereum blockchain, like Uniswap, Aave, and USDC. You may not be aware of this, but many of the tokens that we use on a daily basis are actually Ethereum based, meaning that they are written with the ERC20 standard. And it's really useful to know that because you can swap these easily or you can create liquidity pairs in DeFi, which I will explain in future videos. Now, there are some protocols that are working to make these tokens interoperable. We call these bridges, but they don't always work perfectly and they're at a higher risk of getting hacked or exploited somehow. Also, bridging can be a bit of a nightmare. If you've ever tried bridging your ETH to Polygon to pay less gas fees when buying NFTs, you probably know how clunky the experience can be. Speaking of NFTs, that brings me to ERC721 and ERC1155, which are common token standards for Ethereum-based NFTs. And we will explore them in future videos as we get into more advanced topics. For now, you just need to know that each blockchain has its own token standards. And for that reason, you can't send tokens from one blockchain to another. Otherwise, you risk losing your tokens. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and press that like button. This will help more people discover these videos. Also, be sure to ping that notification bell so you're alerted when I release the next video. And let me know in the comments what other topics you would like me to cover. Finally, if you like what you see here, join the Fempeak platform where we have live mentoring sessions with industry experts and you can network with other visionaries like yourself.